This is a 75 year old restless elderly lady with plenty of systemic illnesses and a grade 4 nuclear cataract with dense capsular cortical adhesions. Cataract surgery was planned through superior scleral tunnel. A moderately large rexus was made. Meticulous and complete cortical cleaving hydrodissection is of utmost importance in situations like this with strong capsular cortical adhesions. Cortical cleaving hydrodissection is performed at multiple points. The nucleus should never be rotated prior to complete lysis of the adhesions. In this case, the nucleus seems to rotate freely. Original plan was to employ stop and chop technique to remove the hard nucleus. However, the nuclear followability seems to be much less right from the beginning. It was also difficult to obtain an adequate purchase on the nucleus. In the meantime, the pupil was found to peak towards the paracentesis site and a block of viscous stuff was also seen. Presence of vitreous was confirmed by sweeping across the pupillary margin using the Sinsky hook. So we were forced to decide on an alternative and safe line of management for the nucleus. Hence, we planned to convert to a non-FACO technique of nucleus management which appeared to us to be the safest option in the given circumstances. So we resorted to the two-hook technique. The nucleus was tire levered out of the bag into the anterior chamber. All these manipulations were performed under adequate viscoelastic cover to protect the corneal endothelium. The tunnel was imparted a trapezoid shape by greater lateral extension of the dissection in the corneal side. Finally, the internal wound was also enlarged with the angled keratome. This way, we can expect to retain most of the benefits of a valvular self-sealing incision which is so important in a patient who is likely to become uncooperative at any moment. The nucleus was expressed from the anterior chamber using the irrigating vectors with adequate viscoelastic protection. Dry anterior vitrectomy is performed to remove the prolapsed vitreous mixed with the residual cortex. Once the vitreous was cleared from the anterior chamber, the residual cortex was aspirated by the bimanual irrigation aspiration technique. Shallowing of the anterior chamber depth may worsen the zonular dialysis and may also allow more vitreous to prolapse into the anterior chamber. Vitrectomy may have to be repeated as and when further vitreous prolapse occurs in the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber should never be allowed to shallow. Viscoelastic is injected before the irrigation handpiece is removed from the anterior chamber. A capsule tension ring is inserted into the capsular bag to reposit the capsular phonics in the area of zonular dialysis. After the insertion of the ring, the rexus appears well centered. The capsular bag is inflated with viscoelastics and the anterior chamber also deepened. A rigid 6 mm by 12.5 mm single piece all poly posterior chamber intraocular lens is implanted in the capsular bag. The stability of the lens is checked. The intraocular lens is found to be stable. Subsequently, the pupil will be constricted with intracameral injection of pilocarpine. Postoperatively, the patient was followed up for two months. She regained a best corrected vision of 6x6 and is now a very satisfied patient. This was a 70-year-old male with grade 5 nuclear sclerosis who had a similar problem but was managed differently. This patient had a narrow angle for which a yak peripheral iridectomy had been performed. Anterior segment biomicroscopy was otherwise unremarkable. A temporal clear corneal phaco with foldable intraocular lens implantation was planned for this gentleman. The anterior lens capsule was stained with tripen blue dye to improve the visibility of the rexus margin, which is useful for the subsequent direct chopping maneuvers. A 5 to 5.5 mm anterior capsular rexus was fashioned which is a desirable size for heart cataracts. A meticulous cortical cleaving hydrodissection is performed to mobilize the nucleus. Pupillary peaking was noticed in the subincisional area even before any attempt was made to rotate the nucleus. Since the pupillary peaking was detected early, nucleus rotation was not attempted at this moment. Thinking that pupillary peaking was a result of vitreous presence in the anterior chamber, we wanted to perform a confirmatory test. 
Asinski hook was swept away from the incision and the paracentesis sites to look for vitreous strands which were indeed confirmed. We should never use a wax cell to draw the vitreous out of the incision because that will apply undue traction on the vitreoretinal base. Next step was to remove the prolapsed vitreous from the anterior chamber. This was achieved by dry automated antitivitrectomy. Ideally, vitrectomy is performed through a tight fitting wound. But in this case, we did it from the main incision, taking care not to have a shallow anterior chamber by injecting viscoelastic into the anterior chamber as and when required. In this case, unlike in the previous case, we wanted to continue with phaco emulsification. So, the surgeon shifted superiorly, abandoning the temporal clay corneal incision site. A fresh scleral tunnel incision was designed. The capsular bag was stabilized with two capsular hooks placed in the area of zonal adhesions. After an initial deep well was created, we proceeded with a direct phaco chop technique. The nucleus was chopped into multiple small pieces using a chang chopper with a 2 mm tip. Before withdrawing the phaco tip from the anterior chamber, viscoelastic was injected into it. This strategy should be followed whenever the capsulozonal apparatus is compromised. A capsule tension ring was atraumatically injected into the capsular bag. A Rayner designed hydrophilic intraocular lens was implanted within the capsular bag. The pupil was constructed with intracameral myocord and was small and round at the end of the surgery, thereby indicating the absence of vitreous in the anterior chamber. Postoperatively, the patient was followed up for six months and has a best corrected visual acuity of 2020 till the last follow up. The strategy for the management of such complications should include early detection, prevention of aggravation of the zonal dialysis, to decide whether it is safe to continue with further phaco emulsification, maintain anterior chamber depth, stabilize the capsular bag with capsular hooks, a judicious decision regarding the use of capsule tension ring capsule tension segment or Sioni's modified capsule tension ring and bimanual anterior vitrectomy whenever indicated. In conclusion, choice of an appropriate strategy tailored to individual patient's requirements will optimize the results of modern cataract surgery in heart cataracts even in the presence of intraoperative zonal dialysis.